to welcome back in this series of breaking down biblical words that are not in English, trying to establish what they actually mean. Today, we'll be breaking down the word Sabbath. Uh, this is the divine platform. I am Luya, and so that is the perspective I will be breaking down these words from. Luya is a Bantu language. The Luya are to be found in Western Kenya and in Eastern Uganda. Uh, so the first questions uh, we should ask ourselves is, are, bibl are the biblical words being used as intended? Are they being used in the right context? Remember, words are radioactive. They change as soon as they are produced. When this happens, it leads to different interpretations and a necessary loss of context. So this loss of context leads to a loss of original intention of the word. So we might end up using the word inaccurately or even unlawfully. What I mean by that is if we don't use it exactly like it's intended to be used, then we are breaking the law, even if it's unintentionally. So how do we achieve or recreate context? There's two ways we can do that. The first one is by examining the word's current use in all its variations. And the second one is by identifying the native speakers of the words or of their language. This is the best way, I believe, to reconstructualize a word and to arrive at its original intention. So Sabbath has sev several variations in spelling and pronunciation. So we have Sabbath, Sabbath, Sabbat, Sabbat, Shabbat, 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 and sometimes it's even referred to as Samba. For this video, I will be using the basic pronunciation of the word Sabata, the way the Bantu would say it, at least the Luya Bantu. And I must uh, preface here, there's several uh, dialects in the Luya Bantu, and so some might say it a little bit differently, but the meaning is ultimately uh, the same. So I will break it down into three syllables and I will tackle each syllable by syllable. So the first syllable is sa. Sa means time. Sa literally means time in Luya. So for instance, if I said sa saba, that is 1 p.m. If I said sa tano, that's 11 p.m. Sa ye, it means time off. Sa ya, time off. Sa ye, yes, yesu. Do you think this is where yesu comes from? I don't know. That's for later. So, sa is used whenever one is stating time or asking about time. So, for instance, if I said isai shiri, that means time is not literally, but semantically it means it's not yet time. If I said Nisatsinga, that's a question. It means how many times. You know, that's, I think, the revolution that the sun goes around. But what it semantically means is what is the time. If I said Sayokutsia, it means it's time of going or time to go. So this is Sa. The watch is called Isa. The clock is Sa. And this is Lisa the time the grand time and this is the motion that the sun makes and if you superimpose this upper portion over this lower portion you'll get the clock okay you'll get something similar to this that's how we tell time okay now the second syllable is ba ba has three meanings b off and wing. So B, the first meaning, 
ravere means they were or they are. This is equivalent to how um, in America they say they be going. That's literally what it means. Ba means be in that sense. Or if one, if I said rally, that means they are, like they be here or they be doing this. And uh, batsire means they are gone or they be gone. So ba literally means be, to be. The second meaning is off. So if I said avanava, it's children off. Avanduva means people off. Va, off or from, could mean from too. The third uh, meaning is wing. Leva means wing. Levalia, it's wing off. Amava means wings. So these are wings. Va, wings. This is the British Airways um, coat of arms for the pilots. And I took this image on purpose because British Airways is BA. The initials are BA. And then they have wings. Of course, there's other imagery here too, but not the wings and BA. And if we go back, uh, where is that? Ba means wing. And then BA is what they have for their logo. So that's interesting to note. There's a lot of such examples, uh, which I hope I have a chance to talk about uh, in later series. Now the third syllable is ta. Ta means light or no. So as light, when I say ita or itaya, the spelling variations with the Y or I, it means light. I say itaya here, it means the light is lit or the light is on, literally. And now ta as no, so ta just says no, means no. So if I say tawe, no, no. If I say ta, tawe, that's no, 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 for emphasis. So if I said eshirita, it means I have not. And those are the lights, ita, the lantern, the tin light, and the, the bulb. I don't know if it's a modern day, but it is. So sabata has many possible arrangements and combinations. So when you break it out like this, uh, each syllable has its meaning like I've just shown. Where sa is time, ba is b wing or off and ta means either no or light when you combine it sabata that's where you get your sabab from however there's two other possible combinations that i'll address and that's uh combining the first two syllables and not the third one that's one combination and then combining the last two sil syllables and not the first one that's another combination what we need to note is that different combination assigns a new meaning to the word, but it's related to the original meaning. So arrangement number two, where we combine the first two syllables, we get saba, which means to ask or to beg. So if I say saba ishindu, it's like I'm saying ask for something. The second meaning of saba means to wash or to clean. So saba mahonoko means wash your hands. And then the third meaning of saba is seven. Literally means the number seven is saba. Misa saba, it's one o'clock. That's when the hour hand is on seven, we say it's one o'clock. So saba means to beg or to ask, to wash your hands, saba, and saba, the number seven. The second combination is when we have the last two syllables and uh, we get three possible interpretations, meanings. So we have vata, that means be not or don't be. So when I say shola vata, it means you won't be or don't be. 
The second possible interpretation means wing no or no wing. So nende livata means with no wing or without a wing. Then the third interpretation of bata is it means a duck, literally means a duck. So when I say amabata ketsire, it means the ducks have come. Nende livata means with a duck. Okay. And these are the ducks. Um, and just going by this interpretation where Rata means B not or wing no, and then we have the duck. I think the original bats did not have wings. They were flightless birds. But now we have ducks that fly, so maybe those are not the original ducks. Now I'm trying to bring it all together to Sabata and uh, creating the religious context. So the Levitical priests did not own anything. Their job was teaching the gospel. They relied on arms from the people for meals and a place to stay. They would usually break at 1 p.m. Sasaba, which means time for asking, which is 1 o'clock. They would ask for food, Saba. So they would, at Sasaba, they would break and Saba for food. Before they ate, they would wash their hands. So they would Saba, or Saba Mahono, they would wash their hands. They would also ask God to bless the food, or Saba Nyasai, to ask God to bless the food. They taught the gospel six days a week, and on the seventh day, Sabbath day, they rested. They did not. Ta. Remember? Ta means no. Ask. For they were not working. This was the Sabbath day. They usually fasted on the seventh day. How do we know this? It's because in Matthew 12, 1, it says, At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were unangered and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. So on the Sabbath day, Jesus went through the corn with his disciples, and they were hungry, and they began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. Uh, next, I'll talk about Samba because some people refer to the Sabbath as Samba. Samba literally means to burn. So if I say it's Samba Matuma, it means I'm roasting corn. Or Samba Muliro means burn fire, literally burn fire. And I think that's where this term bonfire comes from. Another example is Omuliro Ku Samba, fire is burning me. Omumbasu kusamba means the sun is burning or the sun is burning me. This is normally at 1 p.m. when the sun is the hottest. So at 1 p.m. Sasaba, the hottest time of the day when the sun is burning, samba hot, it is also when the priests break from teaching the gospel. So I'm just wondering whether that's where the samba word comes from. Um, Sasaba can also be said as Sasamba. Time is burning. That's the transliteration. Sasamba. The time is burning. But this means the time when it is when the sun burns. That is when it is hottest. So Samba might be a functional translation using um, an action or an event that happens at that time and just using it to, to describe the whole um, to assign a, a particular attribute to it like the Sabbath so it doesn't really mean like the Sabbath means when you stop Um, when you stop 
to ask right this just uh, the sun is burning hot at one and maybe that was the clue for them to stop and that's why we get uh, samba yeah roasting corn burn burn fire or bonfire and the sun is burning hottest at that time and um, that's it if you have any questions other interpretations um, feel free to email me with questions uh, use your discerning spirit pray meditate uh, listen to other Bantu interpretations and um, come to your own conclusions <laughs>